What's up everybody? Jacob here with Smedding Performance. For today's Tech Tip Tuesday, I want to go over how to check bearing clearance with you guys. So, to start off, everything in an engine needs to have clearance. Um, nothing should ever be metal on metal contact. There should always be a film of oil that every component is living and riding on. Cranks, the rings, the lifters, the cam, everything should ride on a film of oil. So we need to have clearance in the motor. And in this video, I'm not going to talk about what type of clearance you want to run because that is a whole other subject that we'll get into someday. In today's video, I just want to show you how I have found it to be the easiest way to check bearing clearance with pretty affordable tools that realistically anyone can go get. And once you get these tools, you really have no excuse why you can't build your own motor or at least put the short block together, you know, the crank and the rods. Um, which I think a lot of people get intimidated by, but this stuff is really easy. So, to start with, we have our crankshaft, we have our rods, we have our bearings. Um, just a good rule of thumb, make sure all these parts have been in somewhat of the same climate for at least 24 hours before you start measuring these. Um, you don't want this to have been in a really hot garage and these to have been in a 50 degree room for some reason. Um, thermal expansion is a big deal, but if they're all the same temperature, you'll be fine. So. Let's get started. Okay, the first tool you're gonna need is a micrometer. Um, these are technically not calipers. Calipers are the little slidey ones like these. These are calipers. They're meant for quick measurements that are not meant to be accurate. Um, this is a micrometer. These are highly accurate. Um, this one, for example, is accurate to five one hundred thousandths of an inch. Um, so, now, this is a very nice one. This is a Minotoyo. These are Japanese made. Um, in my opinion, this is probably one of the top three that a consumer can get as far as its accuracy and repeatability is the big thing for machining. However, if you're checking bearing clearances, this is kind of a one-time deal and then you're going to be adjusting this and moving it around for the next project that you want to do. The way I check bearing clearances is I don't even care about these numbers over here and care about actually measuring what this journal diameter is. The only purpose I use this for is to set that these two anvils are the exact distance apart of the journal that you want to measure, okay? You can get these other brands really cheap, Fowler, they're much more affordable than Mitotoyo, and honestly, they're just as good um, for hobbyist or even light engine building work. So, with all that being said, basically inside of this turret right here are a bunch of micro fine, super fine screw threads that allow it to screw in and out and adjust the distance that this anvil comes in and out towards this anvil. Okay, for this example, I'm using a rod journal and all I'm worried about is getting this caliper set up to match this journal's diameter. Um, now, this is where some experience comes into play and a lot of people will get confused or maybe even frustrated is how much friction you want this micrometer to have over this journal, right? I can adjust this about another half thousandths of an inch and it's tight but I can still get it over I and mean, I could probably even go up to a thou and I can still force it over and see that it's it's holding itself on there and so it's putting a little bit of stretch in the calip in the micrometer giving us an inaccurate measurement so basically the easiest way I can explain this without showing you firsthand is that you want the caliper to be able to basically fall off the journal under its own weight. So it's just right there to where it's tight, it's firm, but it's not getting stuck because you're stretching it so much. You don't want it to be where when you put this on the journal, you can wiggle it side to side because then obviously we have a lot of slack in the caliper, micrometer, sorry. And so right now I have no side to side movement. I mean, I can wiggle it this way, but I'm talking about the actual anvils going side to side. And I'm confident that that is where the diameter is for this journal. All right, now you can check your other journals. Um, you can kind of, and then I wouldn't adjust this again. I would just go off of feel. You'll be able to feel how the caliper slides over the journal if one of them is tighter or bigger than the other. If it's a good crankshaft, they should all be the same within maybe two thou or two tenths of a thou of each other. It's pretty good, in my opinion. So, with this set, we're going to put it to the side, 
and the next tool we need is a dial bore gauge. Okay. Now again, I have a nice Minatoyo unit, um, but again, Fowler makes these much more affordably, and for most people, I think that's more than enough tool for them to check their clearances. Um, and these come with a bunch of different spacers underneath this little lock head. You can see these are removable. So you can adjust them around for different sized journals. Right now, I have the 2.1, uh, whatever you want to call this little anvil dude in there, because this is a 2.1 rod journal that we're checking. And now, I'm going to stick this into my micrometer, and I'm basically going to zero out this head to the diameter of the micrometer. So again, I still don't really care too much about how accurate this is, or how, I'm sorry, how accurate these numbers are, because again, all we're doing is using this to simulate the diameter of the journal so we can zero out our dial bore gauge to it. So let me move you all up to the face of the gauge now. Okay, this is kind of difficult to film, but bear with me. So I'm putting the dial bore gauge inside of the micrometer and I'm basically moving the head this way and then I'm going to move it up and down this way and only in those two planes. And what I'm looking at, as you can now watch this needle, is as I move it, it's, I'm moving it the same direction but the needle is going to go up, it's going to peak and then it's going to sweep back down. I want to find that peak and then I'll go back and forth, find its peak, check it again side to side, and I'm finding where it's set at. Then we'll loosen this one, a little set screw on the side, and we'll just bring it down to zero, somewhere at the top where it's easy to read. You don't really have to, but I like to make it easier to read. And we're going to repeat, find that peak where it stops sweeping, and then we'll crank this over, and you'll keep doing this until you have your dial bore gauge perfectly zeroed out inside the micrometer. And we are basically there. I'll check it one more time. Alright, that is zeroed enough for me. So again, that is why the accuracy of this isn't the of the utmost importance to me. It still needs to be a nice quality tool, but if it's not $800, you'll be fine. You can buy probably a $50 one of these that just has a two to three inch range. That's gonna cover basically 90% of every American V8 that you'd ever wanna play with at least. And uh, you're good to go. So now the dial board gauge is zeroed out to the journal of this diameter, to the diameter of the journal. And so next we'll take our connecting rod and we're going to pop in the rod bearings that we want to run and then torque these bolts down to final spec. The connecting rod is fully torqued to where the manufacturer wants it to be and I'm now going to stick this into the gauge and sweep it straight back and forth and we will see what our clearance is. So I have the dial bore gauge in my hand we're going to put it into the connecting rod right in the middle and then as you sweep it back and forth you'll see the needle rise and fall Currently this rod has about 2.9 thousandths of clearance. And again, I don't want to get into what clearance you want to run because that is a whole other huge topic that we would need to do probably two videos on because there are just so many variables. But long story short, you now have an, a point where you know what your rod bearing clearance is. And if you want more or less, it's much easier from here on out to pick a bearing that you want to run. Currently I have a set of standard H ACL bearings in it. They're an H compound bearing, which is basically a high performance coated bearing. And we have about three thou of clearance. So if you wanted to go tighter, you would put either a full, so let's say your target was two thou. I'd probably just put a full set of one under bearings. That's going to tighten it up one thousandths. If you want a 2.5 thou, do a half one under and a half standard. And if you wanted more than three, you could do a half standard and a half standard X or a full standard X and get around four thou clearance and go from there. That's kind of it. I, again, I think this is a really simple process. I think a lot of people get scared when they see how complex it is. This took me all of what this video's length, which is somewhere around eight minutes total. So without me narrating it, I could have probably done this in probably two minutes. So again, this tool, it's only purpose to me is to find the journal diameter 
Then zero your dial bore gauge to the micrometer. And then torque your rod down, dial bore gauge and the rod. Voila, you have bearing clearance. You are now a semi-professional amateur engine builder. That pretty much sums up today's Tech Tip Tuesday video that I wanted to do real quick for you guys. Let me know in the comments below if there's any videos or subjects you want to see me talk about in the future. Um, I really like these kind of videos. I, I really enjoy being able to share some tips or tricks that I found because when I was trying to learn how to build engines, it was really annoying how many hoops people and magazine articles make it seem you have to jump through to do this stuff. When in reality, I mean, motors are, they're complex, but when you look at them as one part, one part, one part, they're really simple. And I think a lot of people just get scared because they look at it as the whole motor when, no, it's just a block with a crank, a rod, some rod bolts, and a bearing. You have your bearing clearance, so you know what to torque the rod to because the instructions came with the rod. Torque it in the motor and you'll, you'll be good. This is not black magic. This is not dark science. Machining, a little different. Um, if you're a first time engine builder, probably have someone else machine your block for you. Well, if you're a first time engine builder, you, you probably don't have the equipment to machine a block. But uh, anyways, that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. See you guys next time.